こんにちはビッキーですえっと今月はエイダスダンロス症候群という病気のえっと意識を高める月なのであのそれについて動画を作りたいと思いましたあの動画は英語<笑>となりますが、えっと、字幕をあの書きましたのであのぜひそれを読んでくださいはい動画始めましょう So、uh, the month of May is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome Awareness Month or EDS Awareness Month I was diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome last year in like around October、um, and I've had I've thought that I've had it for quite a while at least a year before that、um, and the only reason I even heard of EDS was because of YouTube、um, so it being EDS Awareness Month I decided that I wanted to do my part to help to spread awareness for it so What is EDS?、Uh, well, actually, there are 13 types of EDS.、Um, but basically, generally, it is a connective tissue disorder. It is a type of connective tissue disorder、um, that affects the collagen.、Um, so, in my case,、uh, I have the most common type of EDS, which is called hypermobile EDS, formerly EDS type 3. And actually, for that type of EDS, we don't know. Um, which gene causes it, but doctors are very certain that it's genetic because it does run in families and、uh, it has a autosomal dominant pattern, so、um, you have a 50% chance of getting it if, one of your, if your parent has it, and that means I have a 50% chance of passing it on to my child. So,、um, collagen. So, let's Maybe have a little biology lesson here. So, your collagen is a very important protein in your body. It is the most abundant protein in your body. It's found in your skin, in your joints, your ligaments, your blood vessels, in your digestive system,、um, in your heart. It's everywhere. And it's what helps keep your body together. It's like glue. So, the collagen is what makes your skin you know, elastic. And it lets it stretch and then go back. So it's supposed to have some give to it, right? But with EDS, the collagen is defective. So, what this means is that my skin、uh, is stretchy. As you can see, it's a bit stretchy.、Um, not extremely, but more than the average person.、Um, there are some types of EDS that have. Uh, much more skin involvement, and they will have much more stretchy, fragile skin. So the skin tears easily、um, and also heals poorly. So when I have like a cut or a scratch, it'll get infected and take a long time to heal generally.、Um, and it also affects、um, your blood vessels, so easy bruising, and also.、Um, Because the blood vessels are a bit too stretchy,、um, this means that blood pools very easily in the body. They don't constrict as well. So, circulation problems,、um, I always have very cold hands and feet,、uh, problems regulating、um, my heart rate when I stand up or sit down, that kind of thing. And the most, I guess,、uh, obvious sign of EDS is hypermobile joints. And hypermobile means they move more than they're supposed to. So, anyone who's known me from when I was very little would know that I'm very flexible. I've always been flexible. Even though I never did sports, I didn't do ballet or anything, and I was just naturally stretchy. And I thought it was pretty cool. You know, I could do lots of cool tricks.、Um, but this is a sign of EDS. Now, it doesn't mean that just because you're flexible, you have EDS, but it is definitely one of the signs, in addition to. The skin stretchiness and you know, kind of soft texture as well. The skin tends to be quite soft、um, and bruising easily. All these things together、um, would signal EDS. So,、um, for a lot of people with my type of EDS, the joints are the most troublesome、uh, part of our body, I guess. 
Um, and it, there's really a wide range. Some people, um, they will have joint dislocations every day, like 20, 30, 40, 50 dislocations in a day. Um, and this can be any joint. So, you know, from your fingers, which is why I wear these cool, cool rings, um, to shoulders, hips, knees, uh, jaw, neck, spine. Some people can have really severe spinal problems because of EDS. Um, and I mean, the reason this happens is if you can imagine, you know, the ligaments and tendons um, in your joints, they're, sp they're supposed to be more like, like a leather belt, right? They keep it in place. But if it's more like taffy, then joints move around way too much and they can very easily come out. And as you can imagine, this is painful. And because of this, you know, looseness everywhere, um, the muscles in people with EDS tend to be very, very tight. So um, there's a lot of muscle pain and, and muscle spasms and because um, the muscles are trying to do the work that the tendons and the ligaments aren't doing. They're like, no, stay in, you know? And then they just, they're really tense trying to keep your body in. Um, so anyway, as you can imagine, um, there are a lot of, you know, musculoskeletal problems. Early onset arthritis is another issue. Um, and tearing, of course, of ligaments and tendons, they tear more easily. Lots of tendonitis, lots of bursitis, all those, all those fun things. Um, and I guess another thing that it affects, of course, is your stability. Um, so just in terms of walking, you know, going up and down stairs, it's very easy to fall. Anyone knows me knows I'm very clumsy, but there, there's a sense of, there's poor, like, proprioception, which means I don't quite know, my, bo my brain can't quite match up where my body is in space, so I'll be walking around, and I'll, I'll see something, and I'll still hit it. I think I'm fine. I think, oh, I'm, I'm gonna be all right, and then I'll still run into it, and then I'll run into it again, and then again, and every time I think I'm not gonna hit it. So that kind of thing. So my joint is like over here when my brain thinks it's over here where it's supposed to be. Um, and, you know, everyday things that you don't think about have to be very, very careful of, like putting on my coat um, or my book bag. I can easily, you know, kind of pop out my shoulder um, or, you know, something like uh, opening a jar can can injure my fingers. And... In case you're wondering, well, what does hypermobility actually look like? Um, I'm not supposed to do like lots of the tricks I used to because they're not good for my joints, but um, I can show you a few things. So um, one thing they actually test for when they're testing for EDS is to see how hypermobile um, your joints are. So they'll look at, for example, your pinky finger. So how far back does it, does it bend? Mine goes back like that. Um, they'll also test your, your thumb to see if you can touch your thumb to your, your wrist, which I can do very easily on both, both hands. Um, and for me, the reason I wear these on the tips of my fingers, cause you can get them for these joints, but cause these joints, they go back very far like that. Sorry, it's really bright behind me. You can't really see very well, but so that happens to you know all of my joints. So it makes it very hard to get a, a good grip on things, and I drop things very easily. Um, and also my my uh, elbows bend backwards like that. Um, my shoulders are quite uh, hypermobile. I can put my arms behind my back like that, it's pretty easy. Um, my wrists are quite flexible, I can easily bend them back like that. Um, my hips are quite flexible. Um, I'm not sure, I'm wearing jeans, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but like I can put my leg behind my head like that, okay? So anyway, I can do a lot of stuff like that. So it looks fun, but not until, not when it pops out. Um, and another thing that uh, EDS can cause is digestive problems. And 
that's something that affects my everyday life. Now in my case, I, you know, I'm not that extreme. Um, I can eat and, and all of that, but I do have pretty severe acid reflux disease, which I had no idea that I had until a few months ago. Um, and now that I look back, I've actually had symptoms my entire life. And I finally got an endoscopy, endoscopy, uh, a few months ago, and they saw quite a lot of damage. And I have what's called Barrett's esophagus, which means that the lining of my esophagus has um, started to change to be more like the lining of my intestine. Um, it's Think of it kind of like scar tissue, I guess. So it's been damaged so much that it's started to mutate a little bit. So it is a high risk for, it, it raises the risk for getting esophageal cancer. Um, so that's one thing I'll have to monitor. And the reason that I have this problem is because the, the sphincter at the bottom of your esophagus, you have like your, your stomach and you have that sphincter, right? So because of EDS, um, the collagen makes that, that muscle not quite strong enough. So it actually opens a bit. So whenever I lie down, my food will come back up. I have to be very careful um, about that. Anyway, I won't go into detail. You probably don't want to know. Um, that's one thing that I deal with and I take medication for that. Um, and another issue that I deal with is um, IBS, which although it's not a symptom of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, many people with EDS do have um, problems with um, intestinal motility and uh, I take a couple medications for that as well. Um, anyway, that's one thing, stomach intestinal issues. Um, another way that EDS can affect you and affects me slightly um, is with uh, allergic reactions. Um, so when you have a normal allergy, which you can test for with a blood test, um, your blood will show that you have certain, um, I guess, antigens that are attacking a specific allergy or allergen, such as, you know, the proteins in peanuts. Um, but for people with EDS, a lot of times their mast cells, our mast cells are just reacting without any sort of antibody telling it to react. Um, and the reason this can happen, they're not quite sure like exactly how it works, but the mast cells, you know, for, for example, they're in your cellular matrix, right? And you have collagen in there. And so if the collagen is, is not quite right, if it's the structure is a bit off, it could affect how those mast cells are, are reacting. Um, they're not exactly sure how that works yet, but there definitely is a connection. And for me, um, I've had allergy tests and the only thing that ever came up was dust, which I knew already. Like, I just sneeze a lot and get, you know, like, gross. Um, but I started having these strange reactions where I'd wake up in the morning and my lip was just swollen and itchy. Or um, my eyes would be really swollen and then I'd get this horrible red rash. and sometimes I'll just get really, 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 really itchy for like a whole day and there's no rash and I have no idea why, but I'm just so incredibly itchy. Or sometimes I would get hives um, for no reason. And uh, these are all relatively mild uh, reactions, I would say, and they don't happen every day. Um, but the thing is, I have no idea when it's going to happen. It, it just, I'll have a few months where nothing and then a couple of weeks where, oh my gosh, I'm waking up every day and I have like this ugly swelling around my face and, and itching. And so whatever my body's reacting to, it's reacting to for a few months or a few weeks and then it doesn't bother it anymore. So I can't figure out what it is. So some people who have EDS have this condition which is called mast cell activation syndrome, which is what I've been talking about. Now I have not been diagnosed with this, I just, went to a doctor and a uh, dermatologist and said, I'm having these weird reactions. And then they're like, okay, here's an antihistamine. And, and that's it. I didn't get any diagnosis. But there are some people who um, do have these severe reactions and they have to take many medications for them and carry around an EpiPen. 
So when you think of EDS, of course the most obvious signs are the skin and the joints, but in terms of everyday life, for some people, it's the stomach gastric problems that are the worst. Or for other people, it's the mast cell issues. Um, and for some people, it's heart problems. Uh, so there are many different um, ways that this can affect people because collagen is found everywhere in your body. And depending on your own body and other factors, that affects how that this disorder affects you. It seems like I have a pretty mild case. Uh, I'm not disabled. I can walk without, you know, I don't need a wheelchair. I don't need to use a cane. Um, it's possible in the future that I might need to occasionally use one, use a m mobility aid. Um, but at this point, um, I'm managing through um, well, medications for the internal issues that I have um, and adjusting my lifestyle. So no more running, um, no more really kind of uh, strenuous activities, uh, anything that could cause dislocation. So like skiing is not a good idea because if I fall, I can very easily dislocate something. Um, another thing is bracing. So if I know I'm gonna be walking around a lot, I might wear a brace. And I actually have some here to show you guys. So this is a simple knee brace um, that I'll keep in my bag and wear sometimes when my knee starts to hurt. Um, uh, in my case, my worst joints tend to be my knees and my, my shoulders in terms of pain. And uh, so, and they're the ones that tend to subluxate the most. I personally don't experience full-on dislocations where I have to go to a hospital and put it back. Like mine will come out and then they'll come back in. And I would say I get little dislocations every day or subluxations, I should say, a couple times a day. But the big ones, ones that really make it so I can't use the joint very much, those happen for me a couple times a year. So let's see. Yeah, so for example, this is my kind of heavy duty knee brace. And um, so if my knee's really, really hurting and like I've kind of subluxed it, you know, or something the day before, then this can make it much easier to walk. Um, I also have a, uh, a sling for my, for my shoulder. This is new, I haven't used it yet, um, but I really wish I had it last year uh, when I, I had a pretty bad uh, subluxation and just kind of powered through it. Um, and my wrists as well, I have a wrist brace, so um, if my wrist is giving me a lot of trouble, I can wear this. So some people, um, their joints are so lax that they just wear the braces all the time. Um, just to be able to walk around uh, safely. For me, I just wear them when I feel it's necessary. Um, I generally don't wear them to work. Uh, I guess I'm just not confident enough. <laughs> or, no, confident is not the right word, but I don't really feel comfortable, to be honest, wearing it to work. Um, but sometimes, like, my commute requires quite a lot of walking. So, uh, about 20 minutes worth of walking because I walk to the station, from the station to the school. So sometimes during the walk I'll wear like my knee brace or something. So yeah, anyway, bracing. Bracing, medication, monitoring. So thankfully I don't have any heart problems. Um, one thing that can happen with EDS is it can make the valves in your heart uh, quite loose. So you can have what's called mitral valve prolapse is one thing that's pretty common with people who have EDS. So my heart is okay, um, but I should get it checked every couple of years just to make sure it's continuing okay because th there is a higher risk for heart issues. Um, another thing to keep an eye on are my eyes, actually. Having EDS means your eyes are more fragile and it can also cause a lot of vision problems. Um, personally, my eyes aren't that bad. Like I wear glasses, but it's not not a big deal. Um, but I do have a higher risk of retinal uh, detachment, retinal holes, and those are quite serious. If you don't fix it very quickly, then uh, you will lose sight in that eye. So I need to get my eyes dilated and checked every year or so just to make sure it's doing okay. Of course, I have to check my 
uh, stomach, esophagus, and my and do a colonoscopy uh, pretty often because of my gastrointestinal issues. Um, those are, you know, once a year, once every few years. So yeah, just monitoring, that's another thing to do. And just just being careful. Um, I can't move like I used to, you know, like I, I'm very deliberate when I'm walking, I'm thinking about it, um, very careful about lying down in my bed. And when I turn over, um, it's very easy for something in my back to pop or for to roll over and my hip might come out a little bit. So, as I've gotten older, I'm just a lot better at, uh, I, I guess, just like being careful, being aware of my body. In terms of like, you know, mental health, that's another thing that a lot of people with EDS can struggle with um, because they might spend years going to different doctors, trying to get a diagnosis, because many doctors, they don't know what EDS is. Um, I mean, the prevalence is roughly one in 5,000 people which although rare is not, it's not super rare. But unfortunately, because it's one of those illnesses that is invisible, really, um, it's, it's very difficult to get a diagnosis. Um, a lot of doctors will dismiss it as anxiety or um, there are quite a few people I know on, on the internet who've talked about how they were dismissed as hypochondriacs and that's why I made this video. I was lucky. I, um, I just happened to stumble across a video about EDS because um, the, there's a YouTuber that I, I used to watch, or I still watch, that I was watching, um, who made a video about it for EDS Awareness Month. And I decided to watch it because I liked this YouTuber. And as I was watching it, I thought, that sounds like me. <laughs> And, you know, because up until that point, I'd always, I, I knew there was something weird going on with my body, but I didn't know what it was. I just, I had no idea. So I'm so glad that I just, I stumbled across that video. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a diagnosis. No doctor I've ever gone to for, you know, my knees or for stomach problems or any of that ever suggested any kind of connective tissue disorder. Um, so... I did my own research. I made a list of all my symptoms and what I, you know, I said I think I have EDS. I got to go to a geneticist and he looked at the, the list of my symptoms. He did an examination and was like, yeah, I think you have it. And it was that simple. I know now what not to do, okay? So I wanted to run marathons. That was something I really wanted to do. But now I realize, like, that would have killed me <laughs> um, to try to train for that. Like, that would have been a really, really bad idea. So I'm glad that I know not to do that. Um, and now I can be really careful about certain things, like getting my eyes checked. Like, I had no idea that I had a higher chance of problems with my retina. Like, if I were experiencing a retinal detachment, I would have no idea that's what it is. I'd be like, oh, what's, what's, what's going on with my vision? Like, I wouldn't know to call the hospital you know, or things with my stomach. Like I never would have asked for the endoscopy because I asked for it. I said, hey, like I'm at a risk of all these things. I think I should have a colonoscopy and, 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 and endoscopy. And because I asked, they did it. And that's when they discovered that I had, you know, these issues. So it is important to get diagnosed if you think you have this, or if you know someone who might have this. And, you know, if, if so I just hope that for me, putting myself out there, that something positive will come from it. If you have any questions, things you want to know more about, please let me know. I'll also leave some links to like more information if you want to read more about EDS. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it. Um, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.